Hello everyone, my name is Galti, and today we're going to be looking at the basics of coal generated power at 100% efficiency, as well as some design tips and tricks. This will be a little different, it's not so much going to be a build along guide, but a general overview because everyone's situation is going to be different in how they can lay out their coal system. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Alright, so before we go and look at the coal generator plant, I wanted to quickly go over a really useful functionality of fluids in this game where you can minimize the amount of pumps you need to use in your system and this is beneficial for a few reasons. So one, you're saving on the material cost of, the, of what it takes to build a pump. You're saving on the energy cost for the pump to run. You're saving the time it takes to place the pumps and you're also saving the amount of cabling you need which can it greatly improve the visual appearance of your build because there's a lot less cables going around. It won't look like a crap ton of spaghetti and whatnot or taking the time to make it look nice and neat. So all around, this is a very useful technique when it comes to elevating fluids to uh, a certain elevation. So to go over what we have in front of us, we have our water extractor and that's going into two different pipes or pipe channels. On the right here we have a pipe with no pump, on the left we have a pipe with a pump, and that pump is allowing the fluid to rise into this fluid buffer here, uh, but more importantly it's just it's bringing the fluid up to this elevation here. And then on the back side we have our water going down and around, and then over on the same side, similar system, but we can see that we're getting, we're getting no fluid over on this end here. Now, because the nature of the pipes allows fluid to kind of flow both ways, if you will, the pump makes it a one-way system, so no water is actually going back down and around. But when we connect this pipe to this pipe, this now brings this whole entire loop into play. So when I connect this, we'll see that the fluid will rise up this pipe here, and it will match this height over here. What this means is, long story short, by utilizing one pump and bringing the water to a high elevation, any other pipes connected to that same pipe, so like this pipe here, this is the, we'll call this the key pipe. Any other pipes connected to this key pipe where water can flow forward or backward that water will be able to reach that same elevation anywhere else in the network. So that, in this example, that anywhere else in the network is this fluid buffer over here. So we can see that we're getting flow up this pipe here. This is also now filling up with water. And then this pipe also is now uh, having some form of flow through it as well. So by utilizing just one pump, I was able to bring water up to a height over here, which is really fantastic for those reasons I mentioned before of saving the time, material cost, um, the amount of electricity that you need or power you need to run the pumps, etc. So I wanted to go over this in this like little standalone system here so that way it's a little easier to explain and also understand without trying to go over this in the actual build itself. So. Now that we have this covered, let's go ahead and take a look at the coal generators. Alright, so as I mentioned in the intro, this isn't going to be a step-by-step -step build guide because everyone's use case is going to be different. You might not have access to the same surface area of water available, or you might have mountains or hills in the way of being able to build something to this size, so this is more so going to be a tips and tricks sort of video where you can pull inspiration and apply it to your situation that suits you the best. So let's go ahead and get right into it. The minimum ratio for a perfect 100% efficient system would be eight coal generators to three, eight coal generators paired with three water extractors. Um, so the coal generators will consume up to 15 coal per minute and 45 water per minute. And I'm saying up to 
because the rate of consumption for those resources will be dependent on how hard these coal generators are working, which is dependent on how big your factory is. So if your factory only needs 50% of the maximum power that the coal generators can provide, it will go through the resources at 50% the rate. So you want to make sure that you have the capacity, though, at 100% consumption to meet the demand of the coal generators, which is uh, 360 water per minute total and 120 coal per minute. So with the eight coal generators, we have three water extractors. These three extractors produce 120 water each, giving us our 360 water for the system. And with the pipe network, for each pair of eight, we need to use two pipelines because the pipes can only transport up to 300 water per minute. So we need an additional pipeline to transport the other 60. Now, based on what we just went over earlier with the water tower system, this pipe here is our key pipe. And this is the one that's being pumped up this water tower. And this is the little exterior flow indicator to make sure the system's running correctly. And on top, you can see that we have our fluid buffer and then out the other side, it's going back down. And at some point it switches or splits into three additional pipes, which are the three pipes that we see down here. And then we have them connecting back into the key pipe with this little joiner. So that way these all four are considered on the same network to where that fluid buffer is. So that way these four pipes, wherever they go, the water inside will be able to go up to the same height of our fluid buffer, and that's where our coal generators are also located. So the piping comes up and in to our sandwich layer here. If you've seen my other guides, this probably looks pretty familiar, except it's twice the height. And that's based on how we kind of have all of this being distributed. So we'll say that this front pipe here is the primary, and the back pipe here is the secondary, or vice versa, whichever kind of way you look at it. So essentially we need the two, so this secondary pipe, actually we'll call this the primary. So this goes into our coal generators, as you can see here, and then these cross joiners are connecting it every now and again. Um, those aren't absolutely necessary. The main thing that you want to make sure you're doing though is the secondary line of 60 is looping in at the end of the line. So that way this 60 water is not being utilized until it hits this coal generator here. So this last coal generator, for all intents and purposes, is receiving a fresh 60, uh, or a fresh line of 60 water per minute. So it's pulling 45, and then that ex excess 15 water is coming over into this one here, which is matching up with our primary line, giving us 45 water per minute here into the coal generator above us. You can see that the coal here is just being split up using an array system or an overflow system, uh, which is completely fine. And that is being provided by a Mark II miner. So we have our belt here. We got the Mark II miner sitting on top of a pure coal node. That's giving us 240 coal per minute. That's because we have two arrays of coal generators. So you only need the 120, so a Mark I miner on a pure coal node, or you know, two Mark I miners on two normal nodes, etc. Just as long as you have 120 coal coming in the system, you're golden. And when it comes to the inputs to the coal generators, very similar to how we do uh, our other builds, or the other builds that I made guides for, we have a simple conveyor wall, and that's pulling up, or using a lift, and that's bringing the coal up into the generator, and then we also have our water pipe here. Now, if you wanted to do something like this, you could see that our coal generators are not centered on the foundation. Probably be a little easier if I look at it from this side over here. You can see that it is slightly offset and it's offset so that way the coal that's coming up is centered with the wall here. So you can see that I have this wall highlighted. So this is the center of the wall. So we got the single wall conveyor here and that's enabling us to put the lift in and bring it into the coal generator. And then over here, this is just a pipeline wall hole. Uh, this is something that you can get out of the awesome shop for a pretty cheap cost. And so we just plug that in, in line with where the input for the water is in the coal generator, and then bring our pipe up. And in order to get this clean parallel pipe here, 
uh, you want to bring in a uh, the pipeline support here at the very edge of the wall so that way you get a nice parallel line and then just bring it into your coal generator. Additionally, when it comes to connecting all of the power for these, I like to offset the power poles just by a little bit so that way we don't have cables stressing, stretching across a, an open space, if you will, or keeping it as minimal as possible. Uh, so we just have them slightly offset to connect and then we just have the same, just got a series of that design or that positioning throughout the entire system. So that's that's really it when it comes to to this. Um, so we you know we have our infamous sandwich layer to hide all the belting and most of the pipe work. Uh, besides, you know, like what we have down here with the water extractors. These can also, if you really wanted to, these can be hidden themselves. But in this instance, I went for the external view approach. Uh, it's you know it's not too intrusive on the eyes sort of situation. But this can even be enclosed too, where you just have the water extractor going into that same you know wall mount sort of situation and this is all just tucked away too just to really you know keep the the general design very minimalistic so but yeah with that i'm just going to go ahead and uh queue up that you know fantastic b-roll that i always include and wrap this video up so uh let's go ahead and do that god these freeform videos where we're not doing a build along guide, like if you saw the tier one iron and copper basics, this freeform stuff is so weird, like having just started out making content. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's keep the B-roll and call it a day. So, bye. All right, and that'll wrap this up. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, feel free to leave a like. If you want to see more content in the future, be sure to subscribe. And if you have any questions or if there's something you want to see specifically in the future, leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do. If you guys did find some inspiration in this video uh, and you end up using it in your build, I'd love to see it. Go ahead and share it with me on Twitter or Instagram. I'd love to take a look. And with that, thank you guys for watching. Take care.